Okay, so here we are on part two. This is the table. We're starting from the right hand side of the table with cost minimization. Okay, where before we were maximizing utility given a fixed income, now we minimize costs given a fixed level of utility that we want to achieve. Prices are exogenous as before. However, where before income was fixed, this time utility is fixed and it acts as our constraint in the, in the Lagrange function. So like before we start out with our Lagrange function, we take the partial derivative with respect to x1, x2, and instead of lambda this time we'll use the, the um, Greek letter mu. We set them all equal to zero. Solve for the first two equations. Solve the first two equations for mu. Set the left hand side of the equations equal to each other and solve for x1. You set this you can set this equation or you can set this term equal to this term. Put prices on one side of the equation, you'll have the price ratio, which will be equal to the marginal rate of substitution. We haven't done that for you here because we did it for you previously, but you can do it yourself. Practice if you like. So we can solve x1 in terms of um, prices, p1 and p2 and x2. We next substitute the value for x1 into the constraint and solve for x2. So remember our constraint, right? So we set it right back into the constraint. That's what you want to do. It's, the same, it's a very similar method to what we did previously, except that instead of an income constraint, we have a utility constraint. Anyway, we plug it back in. So we drop that down a little bit and do some math. What we've done here, because here we have x2 to the power of 0.75 and here we have x2 to the power of 0.25. Since we're multiplying these two together, these two terms together, we can take x2 out and x2 becomes simply x2. Take it a step further. And here we've just expanded it out. All right, so we have p2 to the power of 0.25, p1 to the power of negative 0.25, and 3 to the power of negative 0.25. Why do we have 3? Because 0.25 over 0.75 is 1 third. We've inverted it. That's why it's raised to the power of 0.25 and it just equals 3 times x2. And then we simply divide out. We've div we, we, we basically want x2 by itself, so we divide out every term in here except for x2. And then we have utility x2 equals utility over p2 to the power of 0.25 times p1 to the power of negative 0.25 times 3 to the power of negative 0.25. <clears throat> so now that we solve for x2, we want to solve for x1. So basically, we rearrange this term and we express it in terms of x2. And then we substitute it back into our utility constraint and we solve. What we've done here is we've just simply expanded out the right hand side of the equation x1 is no longer raised to the power of 0.75 or 0.25 just like before x1 to the power of 0.25 times x1 to the power of 0.75 equals x1 then we want x1 by itself so we divide out everything else on the other side of the equation we have x1 in terms of utility and prices this brings us to the Hicksian demand for x1 and x2 and is demand expressed in terms of utility and prices now we are moving from compensated Hicksian demand to the cost function. The word compensated is used to indicate the compensation that the individual receives in order to purchase a bundle of goods on their indifference curve. Using substitution, we now derive the cost fun function from the Hicksian demand for goods 1 and 2. Cost function is the minimum cost that Michael has to pay to attain a fixed level of utility. The implied assumption here is that Michael makes use of all available income in the purchase of goods 1 and 2. Hence, income equals cost. So, income, where before it was equals P1X1 plus P2X2, now it's cost, right? So, cost in terms of utility and prices. Hence, seen demand for goods 1 and 2. We're just going to take X2 and X1, substitute it into this function here. That's how we get the cost function. It's not really a big deal. Whereas before, when we were working with Marshallian demand, Indirect utility was simply taking x1 expressed in terms of income and prices and plugging it into the utility function. Now, take x1 and x2 in terms of utility and prices and we plug it into the cost function. So it's that simple. Now we are on the right side of the last row. We're going to go from cost function 
back up to Hixie and Demand using Shepherd's Lemma. Actually, um, I just want to say this is, <laughs> it's really a lot of fun. <laughs> Once you start to understand microeconomics, it's really, it's really a lot of fun. But if you don't understand it, it's not fun anymore. Shepherd's Lemma states that Hixian demand for good i is equal to the derivative of the cost function with respect to pi. So it's a lot less math than Roy's identity. So yeah, it's just getting easier all the time. Now here we take our cost function with x1 and x2 in terms of utility and prices. And then we simplify it to this right here. Now I'm not going to explain what all this math is in here. It's just long and complicated, but take your time and take a look at it. You'll find that it all adds up. And then we have this right here, our cost function. Now we've simplified our cost function. We're going to go a step further. Before moving on, let us quickly refer back to our Marshallian demand problem where we defined our parameters as follows. P1 equals 1 euro, P2 equals 2 euro, and I equals 10 euro. The Marshallian demand in terms of income and prices is as follows. I mean, because if you're seeing this video for the and you didn't look at the Marshallian demand video, or maybe you forgot what was on the first video, this is just sort of a recap of what we did back there. We're getting a number for utility. The number is 3.39. Recalling from slide 17, Hicksian demand for good one is x1 is equal to this, right? So Hicksian demand for good one is equal to 2.5. If you substitute in our 3.39 for utility, 1 for price 1, and 2 for price 2, it gives us 2.5. Now using Shepard's Lemma, we arrive at the same result. We have our cost function, we derive it with respect to P1, and this is what we get, this wonderful equation. Substituting in the values for U, 3.39, P2, which is 2, and P1, which is 1, it also yields 2.5. The point of substituting in the real values, as I explained in the previous video, again is to demonstrate that although the functions may look different they are in fact the same. Now we are on the bottom row showing the link between Marshallian demand and Hicksian demand. Indirect utility to cost function. The indirect utility function describes the utility received from consumption of goods 1 and 2 in terms of income and prices. By our budget constraint we have implied that total income is equivalent to total costs in the purchase of goods 1 and 2 follows that the inverse of the indirect utility function with respect to I, income, is the cost function. Okay, so here we have the indirect utility function. Invert with respect to I, understanding that I equals C and V equals U, utility. So when we invert it, we have 4U P1 to the power of 0.25 times 4u, or you have 4u times p1 to the power of 0.25 times 4p2 over 3 to the power of 0.75. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Have a nice day.